confident enough that we could absorb them in the lane phase, take the Soraka, as opposed to them just being blind to the power of Zion Rakan. But we should see how things shift up here as we're now in champion select. All right, Talia comes off the board quickly, and it's going to be followed by the Kalista, and instantly no more Cho'Gath available for either top laner. So Hong Kong attitude on the blue side kicking things off there. And there's Rakan ban by Rampage. Yep, so already the adaptation going through. We saw a Unified and Kai Wing really take two with this Zaya and the Rakan. Unified has only played Zaya so far in this tournament. Now, if you look at their big uh, run through the through the uh, regional qualifiers to even get here, it was more about the Tristana. So even if that Zaya gets uh, pinched, although they do have priority pick, Unified can still you know fall back to things like the Tristana, which he's very comfortable on. Mm -hmm. Definitely, I've had a lot of experience on that Hong Kong attitude side. Sejuani now banned away. That's been a pretty perennial jungle pick, so we'll see something a little different here. And with the last bands already done, it means we get a first pick of the Jarvan locked in. Okay, so a lot of flex pick coming out here. It can go down into Godquai's hands. It can go up into the top lane uh, for Rerus there. That does mean the Zaya is open and available to deny from Unified. I talked about his comfort on the Tristana, so maybe Rampage are thinking that it's more worth to uh, to fight over the Trist than, than the Zaya, but so far Unified has looked very comfortable on both champions. All right, so we might get to see an AD carry locked in on the Rampage side, but we already have the Rek'Sai picked up, so this is still more of the same from Tussle. And I feel like Rek'Sai is kind of one of the champions that's really rising up in the world's meta right now. Uh, a lot of versatility with their build. You can go oh, yeah. with the Warriors, uh, previously of the Cinder Hulk. There's the Tristana that I was talking about. I'd love to see them lock it in. I think it just offers everything that they want. Yeah, well, I want to see what they end up pairing support-wise, because this time there's only been one support banned away from Dara, so we'll find out if that changes or if they take it for the last rotation here. But already the, you know, the strength that we set up for Rampage, we've already got out of their first two picks. We wanted to see a more aggressive jungle pick from Tussle. Rek'Sai certainly offers that as well as the ability to be that CC bot going late. And then you have the super uh, hyper scaling ADC with the Tristana. So already out of the gate, I like what Rampage are putting together in terms of the team strengths. Mm -hmm. But over on the Hong Kong attitude side, you can see they're building themselves up a little bit more catch. They Syndra already locked in. It's going to be a solid landing phase for mission, most likely. Now let's see if they end up following through with this Varus for Unified. That's a lot of CC on that team already. Yeah, you said CC, you said catch. I'm going to call it just straight pick, which means that if Hong Kong Attitude ever suffocate Rampage out of an area, ever get their Syndra ahead and have kill pressure on someone, it is very terrifying to walk into dark corners of the map. So we criticized their Baron setup, their Dragon Control yesterday. It was kind of the big catalyst that allowed 1907 Fenerbahce to really punish them. With Syndra and Varus, it becomes that much more easy to control those areas of the map. Mm -hmm. And now Rampage, they do end up locking in a support for themselves. So Dara has the Braum. This is a pretty classic combination with Trisana. You can get that stack up really easy to get stuns off. And this is looking like a much better protection style composition for Yutari Miyashi. And also, Pyro, you're getting everything that you want. You want Dara and a more playmaking support. You want to tussle and more of an early aggressive jungler. Uh, uh, Yutori on that hyper carry. So, like I said, I'm totally happy with Rampage. I feel like they're making the correct adjustments coming into the next day. See if it continues right now. The composition definitely starting to take shape. Now, as we enter the next stage of bands, Shen's off the table, and so is the Corkster. Uh, Corky, of course, has a decent laning phase across from Syndra just because he can itemize into the Hex Drinker, uh, deny a lot of her burst. He's pretty safe there, can move around it. Also, just strong against laning. So, I like the fact that they're trying to pinch and control that matchup. Yeah, on Rampage's side, they're going to start banning out a couple of supports. The Lulu, at least, is one, as they already had the Recon from earlier on. And now LeBlanc's banned away also by Hong Kong Attitude. So Ramane might find himself a little bit forced into something different. I was just going to bring up the Lucian. Yes, the Corky's been taken away. Cassiopeia has been nerfed, so probably don't want to go towards that matchup. But Lucian still fares very well into Syndra. The ability to Relentless Pursuit around a lot of her orbs. Uh, again, can itemize into that Hex Drinker if he really feels that he's being pinched and needs more of a defensive build, and still has kill pressure there. Yeah, and Ramane's already faced off against Mission Syndra in their previous game. Uh, spoiler alert, he kind of got bopped. Uh, but then again, so did the entire team. That was on Orianna. This time, he'll have something a little bit more mobile. So it goes over HK side and they get a quick lock in on the Galio. So that means we are very likely to see that Jarvan in the jungle. Uh, yeah, and it's the fact that it's probably another Galio top lane. Now, coming into Worlds, Galio was played top around 32% of the time globally. Now, since Worlds play-ins has started, he's been played top 75% of the time. So we're seeing a massive swing of more Galios being flexed into the top lane versus the mid lane, and I feel like a lot of that's actually connected to the jungle picks. We're seeing a lot more warrior enchantment junglers as opposed to Cinderhulk, so you need to have that tank. A lot of tanks are going up into the top lane, and Galio slots perfectly in there 
there because he's going to be just as tanky and bring a lot more, you know, cross map mobility, especially when Shin is banned. But Rampage have decided they want to answer that with a little bit more firepower. So the Rumble's actually locked in, gives them a little bit of extra damage across the board rather than just locking another tank. Of course, they've already got two very solid tanks. Even if the Rek'Sai does go Warrior, still kind of hard to break through that shell. And so far, we have a very well-balanced composition. I, I look at Rampage, and I feel like there's a lot of what I call bridging power, and it's champions that are responsible for picking up the early game, then handing that baton off into mid-game power spikes, then handing the baton off again into late game. So it kind of starts with Lucian and Rek'Sai. It can then hand over into Rumble, and then they finally pass it over into into Tristana's hand. So I felt like yesterday Rampage maybe drafted a little bit too much for the 5v5, the late game, and then got blown up before they got there. This composition is going to serve them much better to survive this very hard and aggressive lane phase from HKA. I was about to say let's transition that a little bit to HK because it seems like they're doing what they do best, which is dominate on those laning phases. How big of a lead are they going to have to really build, though, if they still have some of those troubles around objectives? How much do they have to do to make sure that it's not a 50-50, it's a 60-40 or 70-30? Well, then it's about focus in the mid lane. You look at the composition that they've put together. Varus, Janna, there's not a ton of opportunity to gank that early until Varus has the CC. You've got the Janna, so you're probably not going to die down there with the disengage. It's Galio up into the top into Rumble. So, you know, maybe you go up there, but it sounds much better to be like Jarvan Syndra. Yeah, that's probably where I'm going to camp. <laughs> I think mid lane is definitely going to be the place to watch at the start of this game, but Hong Kong Attitude looking to put the 2-0 onto Rampage and try to climb their way to the top of that group. Let's see if they're going to be able to do it as we load up onto Summoner's Rift for our first game of Day 4 here at the Play-Ins. And again, attention about where these teams, what type of options they have into the early game. Uh, I mean, I don't need to point out the HKA combo of Jarvan and Galio. they got the classic cannonball there. That works very well in a 5v5. And if you don't kill anybody with that, you just start dropping an R onto somebody who's still stuck in the pit with Syndra. So, yeah, it's, it, it, it can be a bit of a wombo. And that's the big thing. You know, Dara has to be so on point in this game simply because Syndra has so much kill pressure on any target that she wants. They don't have a, a, a true tank, especially if Rek'Sai, you know, depending on what she decides to itemize or what direction she wants to go, Syndra could have kill pressure on everyone. That is definitely a scary thought, especially in the hands of Mission. Now, Looks like we might be in for a few shenanigans. Rerus is actually going to have to flash out. The rest of Rampage came out of the woodwork. And that now means that Tussle has another big opportunity. We talked about, you know, options in the early game. Uh, Tussle can now go top, try to punish that lack of flash, and go bottom, try to team up with the Braum and get the big hard CC there. Or he can cover his mid lane because Lucian needs to play that matchup aggressive if he wants to abuse Syndra. So offering a safety net by hanging around the mid lane, making sure that the other jungler isn't getting involved. Yeah, God, Kawhi will have his work cut out for him as well. Now, of course, Rerus, no flash. Probably not the biggest deal, the fact that it's lost on the Galio, since he's not going to have as hard of a laning phase and going to be wanting to itemize that MR up against the Rumble anyways. But he's still going to have to be pushed for. You know, typically when you think about Galio, yes, he's against the Rumble, so he probably shouldn't be put in a, a bad situation. He can let that, uh, that wave push into him. But the big thing about Galio is he's just the auto-push champion. Auto-push, get level 6, look for, you know, the ability to roam. Over and over, wash her and repeat. Now, Godquai getting pretty hard leashed here as Kai Wing and Unified starting off on the red. Yeah, and he's getting leashed on the bottom side of the map, so he does have a direct pathway towards top side, again, to uh, try to protect his top laner. So it works two different ways. If he suspects that Tussle might make a beeline for his Galio, he can try to be around the area, maybe secure the Subtle Crab, and get more of that safety net for his top laner for that flash to come back up. Right, now, we'll check in how the bottom starts, of course. Talked about a long range, and it's going to be difficult to really get in on the Varus and Janna early on. But Yutori Mayashi's already started by getting a little bit of harass off on Unified on the lower range Tristana to kick things off. Protected, as it were, by, you know, this very tanky front of uh, Dara. And it's the fact that they feel very confident that if it comes to an all-in that they're going to win. They even get the better level, too. So uh, just abusing the Braum Tristana. Again, it's Janna Varus, so you probably shouldn't have kill pressure unless the junglers get involved. But... I expect that the lane will look mostly like this for the majority of the time. That does mean, though, that Dara has to be so much more careful about placing his vision if they're going to be pushed forward. Where Tussle picking up the Scuttle Crab, again, creating that safety net for his bottom lane. If they're going to be pushed forward, he needs to make sure that he gets the vision down and keeps them safe to do so. Yeah, it's already starting to fall according to plan, though. We saw that in the draft, they definitely learned a few lessons that we hadn't seen them really demonstrate yesterday. But now Tussle already going into the Hong Kong Attitude Jungle while the Jarvan's away. The Rex I can play. And Godquai's focusing a little more on the top side. He's even going to get spotted out by that ward in the brush. Yeah, so we'll see if Godquai has a good read on where Tussle is, takes Scuttle Crab, and then walks up to the uh, enemy Krug camp, or maybe looks for a gank on Lucian right now. Looks like he's just walking it out for the time being. He's Still like, I really need this Gromp right now. Yeah, wow. Well, it's, uh, it's very important to get your levels up. Makes a jungler grow big and strong. 
Mission's already down to half his health, actually. So Ramane started to bully this pretty effectively with a level advantage as well. And he can be pretty fearless. Like, he's got the cleanse if the stun comes in. He can stop it from happening. But there's not a whole lot of vision on either side of that river. So, you know, he doesn't necessarily know if Godquai's around. Yeah, the key thing is, is that he's playing towards the bottom side, um, making sure that he's near Tussle, making sure that he's near the lane that's pushed forward. He's got the two wards underneath him. So, like I said, Lucian needs to play this matchup aggressively if he wants to try to abuse it. They picked the Lucian into the Syndra, so obviously he felt comfortable. And now it's about staying safe. Staying safe, but being able to get a little harass on as well. And for all the bluster about Hong Kong Attitude having the strong lanes, I mean, it's very early on in this game, but they're the ones who are getting pushed back in two out of three of them. And you can even see that in, in the top lane, they had already spotted God Kwai out. And he ended up backing away. So there's really not a whole lot getting done. And Hong Kong Attitude, I mean, there's definitely a lot of time for this team. But it seems like they're not making the moves just yet. Although, the, oh, hold on. I was going to say he might make it into it. Because God Kwai is actually going to walk into Tussle. Ooh, is he stopped the back? No, there he's go. going. Prey Seeker gets the knock up. Now God Kwai, he's got a shield on. He's going to have to flag and drag away. That means his jungle is not his for the time being. And Raptor Camp is so important because there's so much gold and experience on the cap. So this is actually a big deal right now if uh, Tussle can deny a lot of these Raptors. Might be in for Smite Fight, throws the flag down once again. Tussle trying, but he's a little bit low on the health bar now. Ramane Dara getting involved. And there's the Smite down. Looks like they're going to try to catch Mission out. Scatter the Weak stuns up Dara. Pretty big commitment there from Rampage, but the name of the game is Deny the Jarvan. Frankly, I just kind of liked the uh, the action from Tussle. You know, he's making his back. If he doesn't run into Jarvan, that's fine. He's going to get the back anyway. Happens to catch him out. The Raptor can't spawn, so he tries to deny what he can um, from the enemy jungler. Again, Godquai is really the guy that you need to target and attack on this HKA roster. He doesn't have a ton of experience in the jungle. Formerly was their ADC, so definitely comfortable with the team. But the team themselves has said it. We're strong laners, but we do have a weakness in our jungle. Yeah, and that's what happens when you don't get as much experience as somebody like Tussle has. And even though Hong Kong Attitude came into this tournament looking like a more favored team than Rampage, kind of proved it during their previous matchup, we're already starting to see that they can take a few lessons out of their losses and start to move forward. And this is the win conditions you were talking about. Tussle being active in the early game, putting God Kwai onto the back foot, that's one of them. Yeah, but it's about how he's been active, and it's putting and tracking the enemy jungler. It's not necessarily setting up his lanes and ganking very heavily. He's pretty much letting his lanes do a lot of the work for him, being pushed forward in the mid lane, pushed forward in the bottom lane, and then using those pressure points to pivot and invade, figure out where God Kwai is. Yeah. Still be pretty effective in those team fights. Now, level six comes in. Ramane spends the last of his mana on a calling mission down a little bit low. He's pushed far forward too, but he's also playing up towards the top side where God Kwai it's not too far away, and they've got vision in that river, so they know there won't be any wreck size out of nowhere. Romney playing a little dangerous. Isn't a great situation, yeah, for Lucian right now. He wants to get this big wave, but uh, it's going to force Tussle to actually hang around him just so he doesn't get dove or threatened by mission. Although now it's opened up a gank opportunity. Looks like it's bait. Insta flash, but he's still going to follow through with one of his own, and now Romney on the chase. Looks like we're going to have some backup, but will it be too little too late? No, it is not, as Rerus comes in. First blood is going to be on Tussle as it's picked up by Rerus in the Scatter of the Week. Scatters Ramane back to the safety of his tower. Ah, uh, and an unfortunate read for Rampage right there. I understand what Tussle's trying to do. He sees that his Lucian's in trouble. He's got a big wave. He doesn't want to just allow Cinder to repeatedly punch him in the face under the tower, but just overreaches a bit. Just take the flash and walk away. Great rotation from Rerus there. Yep, and that's exactly what the Galio needs to do. We were talking about it earlier. Getting involved as soon as he can, level six is, and here's where it was. Yeah, and look at where Galio is on the map. The fact that he's not in the top lane, so that should have been communicated to Tussle that he can't overreach there. And unfortunately for him, his mid laner just didn't have the mana to follow up and to try to find that kill. That's a completely different story if Lucian is able to immediately relentless pursuit forward and trade that passive. All right, so despite giving up first blood and ends up going into the Galio, of course, as opposed to the Syndra, it seems like this isn't the worst thing in the world for Rampage, they've just lost a little bit of pressure in that mid lane. Well, might be a little worse in the top. Taunts out, flag drag, Evie's already gonna flash it. He's out, but on half a health bar. And we talked about the first blood. The thing is, is that Rerus now has his MR item. He's got the Spectros Cow, so he's gonna be very comfortable to push forward into that lane. It is gonna be an opportunity, especially with Evie, Evie, excuse me, not having his flash. Again, Jarvan Galio, there's a lot of CC and lock down there. Rumble's not the tankiest champion, so there is an opportunity for kill pressure here if Godguai wants to commit to it, but he probably needs to protect mission. Um, yes, the Syndra didn't die there, but he did burn his flash. That's a pretty easy lockdown maneuver once Rek'Sai gets her ultimate, so I would expect Tussle to hard farm, get level six, and immediately look at mid lane. Yeah, and the top's gonna be able to sustain itself for a little while, despite the fact that Evie can't quite do as much damage. Maybe a little more once he evolves into Flareon. 
Thank you. Now I will never mispronounce it again. I've saved it. There we go. I was always a Vaporeon girl, though. Really? I did Jolteon personally, but uh, I just, electric types are OP. Anyways, back into this one. Yutori Miyashi, he's kept pretty keel on even with Unified, but they keep this pressure up, and obviously neither jungler has really gotten involved. I feel like that's going to change soon because there is an Infernal Dragon on the map, and that's going to be fairly valuable if this game trends this direction of going a little longer. I mean, the thing is, is it, again, opens up the opportunity for Tussle to start blitzing in and laying down that deep vision over the red buff jungle. Right now, again, hard farming to that level six, now has the ultimate. I expected that he would go mid and try to abuse the flashless Syndra, but there is also the other option of just trying to hunt down God Quai. You know, he does have the pressure point in bottom lane, might need to help them out if Jarvan pops his head down there. Very possible. So Ramane, he'll be the one picking up the blue buff on a couple more auto attacks, and they will keep him full of mana, the thing that he wasn't able to do last time when they tried to make the 1v2 happen in the mid lane. Although, Tussle, let's see where he ends up going. Mission's in a uh, risky situation. He doesn't want to be pushed forward. The wave is already pushed in, so you can see that he's kind of like wandering around like, oh, I, guess, I guess I'll clear wards. I can't be forward. I just have to wait for the creep wave to come down to me because I don't have the safety of my flash. Yeah, trying to play it out as safe as possible. And there's a lot of control wards up in this top side jungle, but it's not going to help to try and spot out Tussle because... Well, he's towards the bottom side, not going in for the dive yet. But it's totally fine. HK are doing the right thing. Mission is doing the right thing. He's just playing safe. He pushes it forward, and then he just wanders away. He's like, please, get me my blue buff. Get me out of here. I just have to hang on a little bit longer before I can turn this lane and go aggressive again. Now, what that means is that... Uh, they can start playing the bottom lane for Rampage because the mid laner is not going to be putting a lot of pressure, which means that Lucian is opened up. You know, he's ducking in, he's he's uh, scouting for Ward, trying to clear out this track behind the Baron, or excuse me, the Dragon Pit, so they can open a, a gank path towards that bottom lane, which is always pushed forward. Yeah, it's obviously completely dark for Hong Kong Attitude. Ooh, Kai Wing, he gets caught up for just a second, not stunned, but meanwhile, there's a gank up top. God, he flashes forward. Oh, and there's going to be a hero's entrance Here on top Tussle. of that rumble. There's no flash, and Eevee, let's see what he can do. Taunted up under the tower. Tussle trying in for the relief effort, but just too late. Yeah, too little too late, and great vision from HKA that allowed their mid laner to stay safe, which then freed up God Quai to punish the flashless rumble into the top lane. So they read the map. They understand we can't go bottom, we can't go mid, but we can certainly go top. Everyone hang tight. Yeah. Frustration, Ramane spends out his calling, just trying to get a little chip damage onto mission. Of course, he turns it right back around with the Dark Sphere. Tussle hanging on to top lane because he can't afford to give this minion wave away. Guitar Miyashi already a little low himself, but despite being down two kills, doesn't seem like nearly as bad as it was last time these two teams met. I mean, they're certainly faring better. Their towers aren't dropping as early, but hold on. HKA going aggressive because here comes Dive. Mission. Oh boy, Yutari Miyashi preemptively heals it out, but Dara might go down anyways. Mission unleashes the power straight into the ultimate. Or the unbreakable, I should say, and he's staying alive as Dara. Yeah, but the damage has been done. They do have a big creep wave. They also have the Janna, and it looks like they're going to commit to the push. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, uh, Lucian is pressuring forward, but he doesn't have the creep wave, and he doesn't have the sidekicks. All right, so Hong Kong attitude, utilizing a little bit of a power spike for themselves. Not so much in the items, but the fact that they've just got three people down bot to try and push it out. Oh, hold on. There is a TP, and they're also pinging deep. There's a ward there, so uh, Eevee could look for it, but looks they're like they're just going to let it go. Oh, here we go. Back again. Second round. Okay, so th thinking about it, but Rampage decided not to go all in on that, and that's first tower. Yeah, big problem was is that the bot lane wasn't in position. You have to think if Braum and Tristana were a little bit closer, maybe they would have pulled the trigger, sent the rumble down there, and tried to look for a skirmish. But overall, again, just a great read from HKA. Uh, they understand that uh, Rek'Sai was up into the top lane, had to respond to the big creep wave to try to hold onto the tower, and with information about where the enemy jungler was, Mission knew that he was safe to wander down into the bottom river, not going to walk into a 2v1 scenario, which freed him up for the realm. Yep. As a result of all that, Hong Kong Attitude, they find themselves at 3,000 gold lead. It's only 12 minutes in. However, they will lose out on this Infernal Drake, because Rampage just realized, all right, well, he didn't take all the spoils of war, so we're going to come in here and just grab the rest of it. Yeah, just the half. tug of war of tempo. You know, if HKA are going to expend their time, maybe overreach on the map in terms of time spent, take the first tower, they're then going to make their immediate backs, which opens up a window for the Infernal Drake. And that's so important for Rampage, right? Like, not only are you down against a team that's going to be a little more laning dominant anyways, but your win conditions are try to play up into that late game. You have this bridge comp that you talked about. The Lucian's strong, the Rumble will soon be strong, but eventually it's gonna be all on the back of Yutori Miyashi. And that's a Tristana that has an Infernal Drake, extra AD. You're not gonna to want to miss that.
And you know, everyone talks about the Tristana in the late game, but I'm also a big fan of Lucian in the late game. I think a lot of teams really uh, underestimate his damage as well as Rumble. I mean, you look at Lucian Rumble, you're like, bam, mid-game power spike. But late game, if these guys get the get the space, they're still putting out some massive numbers alongside that Tristana. Now, that's a good point. And all things considered, when you have River stacking uh, MR on this Rumble, or excuse me, on the Galio, it's going to be, you know, not nearly as effective as when Ramane is spending a big calling into his head, but Adaptive Helm up, of course, already completed. Another tower is going to fall, it keeps that gold lead going. And Godquai was a little bit deep, but he takes the Blast Cone Express out over the Rift Herald pit, and, uh, it gets aggroed on the way out. Does need to be a little bit careful here because you can tell that Rampage don't want to let this Rift Herald go just for free. They've also pulled Dara, so they have the uh, the numbers advantage, at least for the top side of the map, until HK decide they want to reset the map, send their Galio bot side, and move their bot top side. I think Rampage wanted to reset something, but Mission, he was able to spend a couple of cooldowns to push back Ramane and Tussle, or and Dara, I should say. Dara just been on a roaming spree because at this point, laning phase is over. He can leave Yutori Miyashi to his own devices and there's no counter pressure. There's also the fact that, you know, Yutori's sitting on the Tristana. He's totally fine to play a side lane, more so than most other AD carries. Has the uh, the ultimate to push back, has the rocket jump, so a lot of safety there. And you can use the Tristana then to create a pressure point. So you can already see uh, Yutori's hard pushing bottom, just, sh just trying to dissuade HKA from automatically walking up to the Rift Herald because he's threatening the structure. There's actually a lot of Rampage members down towards Bot Unified. I don't think he's in danger of being dove anytime soon, though, because Kai Wing's there, so is God Choir, just about in the area. But once again, Rampage continue this trend of building up vision just inside of the Hong Kong Attitude bot side jungle. And they're also keeping a lot of it clear for themselves up top. They see Mission moving up here. But the problem is, is the vision's not where it needs to be. The central focus is going to be around that Rift Child. And you can see that HK are starting to unlock their mid laner, roaming up there, threatening the Rumble. Again, uh, Rumble sitting on the variety bucket of items, has has a book, has a Ruby Crystal. That's a discount build right now. It's not great. I know Rumble's a low econ champion. He gets a lot of his strength through his levels and his ability to use that ultimate, but he's not feeling good right now. And HKA can exploit that. Yeah, it starts to get a little bit better he does pick up a Haunting Guys and a Blasting Wand, so he's definitely well on his way to getting the Landry's Torment. Uh, but I think he's been a little more tormented than that to start things off. Now, looks like we're in for a dive. Teleport Ward already down, and Godfly looking to go in. Oh, they've got to jump up, and Yutori Mayashi is going to get a knockback. But Galio's right behind him, and even though Evie's there, it's not going to be nearly enough. Even Mission coming in, not needed for the cleanup duty. That's a double kill for Unified. And there's a lot of members here. Not the biggest creep wave, so they should be cleared out by Rampage, and their tower shouldn't be underhand, but hold on. Oh, man, Evie even flat but he gets taunted up off the back half, forcing out Ramane. It's ultimate now. Unified still trying to push forward. They've not got that many minions, but they've spent a lot out of the health bar. Yeah, exactly, and that's the thing. They chipped away at the health bar, which means that they now have the time to wait for the creep wave to crash, and now the inner tower is under threat, especially with Jarvan on the side. Yeah, Hong Kong Attitude just pulling the ghost switch and realizing they can take out a couple members of Rampage right off the bat. 4-0 on the kills. They're about to make it 3-0 on the towers. And there it is. As soon as they hit that power spike with... Uh, the, the best item in League of Legends, as it were, the Arden Sensor. There they go. And it's just set up from the very beginning. HK have had a much better read on the map for pretty much the big two plays that they've made. Sets down the ward, gets the automatic teleport, and God, why, it doesn't get easier Cataclysm than that. Forces the flash as well as the rocket jump out of Tristana, which means as soon as she's locked in, she's not going anywhere. Vindar will fall down, but the biggest mistake that I think Rampage make in this instance is that Rumble overreaches a little bit, loses so much of his health bar, which means he can't sit under the tower and try to clear out with his team with Flame Spitter. Yeah, we were just talking about how he's been having a little bit of a hard time. It continues. That's only... Well, he only, only had one death. He ended up getting away, but unfortunately they couldn't defend the tower off the back of it. So Rampage, they've definitely got some catching up to do. 6,000 gold is the deficit. Hong Kong attitude. I asked you at the beginning of this game, how big did it need to be at about 15 or so minutes for HKA to feel pretty comfortable starting some big things up like the Baron once it hits? What do you think about 6K? Uh, it's definitely big, and it's a big deal at 17 minutes. Again, uh, HK are just start starting to move into that portion of the game, however, when their setup is what we need to be examining. It was uh, questionable, I'm going to say, against 1907 Fenerbahce yesterday. So we'll keep our eyes. How do they move their vision? How do they protect their vision? And how do they create picks off of their vision? Again, it's the Syndra, it's the Varus, the Jarvan. They have a ton of potential. Now the picks have definitely been coming, and they've even got disengaged right now. Now Mission, oh, that's a heal forced out. Godqua even tanking the last half of the culling. And now there's pressure on Rampage's side mid. Not a whole lot of minions, though. But we do see Galio starting to rotate over. He's 
trying to decide, do we collapse into the mid lane and look for the team fight, or do I continue to pressure forward on the top lane, create a big pivot point that we can then reset our backs and move towards that infernal drake? That's the thing for Hong Kong Attitude, though. They've got the choices right now. It seems like Rampage doesn't really have much of one. They kind of have to try and force down the mid. Yeah, I love the word that you use choices there, because I feel like HKA, it seems so subtle, and yes, the gold lead is pretty big, but the kill count is low, four to zero. That doesn't, uh, that's not indicative of a high action game, but I feel like HKA have actually been super proactive in driving driving the tempo and controlling a lot of these choices. You know, it was Tussle that, and I'm gonna hard farm to level six, I can punish the flashless Syndra, but he never got the opportunity because he's always just been responding to what God Kwai was doing in the early game. Yeah, but he actually was able to preempt God Kwai in the very beginning quite effectively. We were giving him a lot of praise for being able to try and shut him down, but it just wasn't quite enough. And it seemed like that effort kind of went all out the window the moment he tried to save his mid laner and ended up giving first blood. Yeah, HK just understanding exactly where to attack on the map and then executing on it beautifully so far as they are going to go ahead and start up the Infernal. It should be uncontested again. Uh, Rampage, they're simply down in gold, they're down in vision, and they don't want to try to overextend risk, especially this close to a Baron spawn. You lose the 5v5 there, HK are just going to rock over to the Baron and pretty much close out the game. Yeah, that's 40 seconds until the Baron's going to spawn up. And Rampage pretty much stuck under the mid turret for the time being. They've of course sent Evi up to the top side and Ramane down to the bottom just to keep waves cleared so it's not an easy Baron take when it does come up. But the Hong Kong Attitude, they've got all the tools in their kit to try and fire down anyone if they find them. But this is where the magnifying glass gets to be set up on HKA. If you're going to talk big, if you're going to be a top 16 team, guess what? The Baron's spawning in 19 seconds. The next dragon's going to be in Infernal. Where do you place your vision? How uh, easily do you execute on it? How are you managing your side wave control when you are setting up these big objectives? It doesn't matter if this is Rampage, if this is Fenerbahce, if this is SKT. This is where you need to clean up if you are going to walk the big walk. you got to have a big stick. Yeah. And it's definitely not going to be the most difficult opponent to prove it against, but we've seen Hong Kong Attitude already make some big mistakes, so maybe this is the time to try and rectify that to you know, better their own objective setups. It's also putting the onus on them to continue to drive the tempo of the game. Rampage at this point, they kind of want to sit back, look for these big 5v5s where they can utilize the rumble. He's level 12, has two points in the ultimate, so despite the fact that he's probably not feeling too comfortable in his build, he still will hurt. But it's about buying time for uh, Yutori and this Tristana. Yeah, it looked like Hong Kong Attitude wanted to try to get the catch off, but it was Dara that they managed to find, and this is the team fight chance for Rampage. Can they get the kills off? God quite not quite going down, but they've got a Taunt up onto the Tristana Yutori Miyashi going down to Missions Ultimate. Power uh, unleashed on that last tick of health bar. And now Ramane trying to save some lives off the back half of it. Doesn't really matter too much. Evie's forced to flash back behind the, the wall of Dara. And Hong Kong Attitude not losing a man. They are too big, too tanky. Yeah, and they've got the tempo behind them as well as the creep wave. So this will be a free tower, which makes it that much easier to now blitz that vision on the top side, right? top red side jungle and make this Baron even easier to secure when they turn towards it. I suppose everything is free if you kill the ones who own it. Uh, <laughs> down goes the Tristana, results in the tower. Yeah, there's another Infernal Drake coming up in a while, but the Baron, it just gets easier and easier when they have all of this gold. I, I just wonder how soon are they going to actually try to go towards it. Right now, they don't seem to be in a big rush. Yeah, but let's take another look at that team fight. Unfortunately, uh, Utori there, he does have his flash available. He tries to use the rocket jump. It's interrupted, and then he's just CC locked, but he never even gets the opportunity to flash away. Now, this starts, and it looks okay for Rampage, but it's when Rerus finds the taunt there on Trist. She gets locked down. She's got nothing left, and she just pops like a balloon. All right, I have a recommendation for you, Utori Miyashi, by QSS. I would just say press, press F. Well, a little faster, yeah. It's on D, though. Ah, see, that's his problem. <laughs> I stand firm on this. F I mean, is for Flash. You do, you do need... Is, is it in, in Japanese as well? Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I really don't know, actually. I've never played on the LGL. Um, but anyways, five kills to zero for Hong Kong Attitude. You talked about it not being necessarily as high of an action game, but it's played exactly to the win condition. They get the catches. Even in extended team fights, it kind of does feel like a series of catches that just keeps resulting in towers. For every kill, they've managed to knock one down. And they might get another catch, though, as Tussle is trying to create space for his mid laner here. Might be in trouble. He was seeking prey, but it was Hong Kong Attitude that found it. Ramane jumping, there's the pit, flashing out. Kai Wing and God Kwai still hanging on, and looks like Ramane expends pretty much everything, but he does get out alive. The classic Janna player. You can always tell uh, playmaking so supports when they play Janna because they rush forward and everything. They're like, no, no, I got the slow, I got this. I'm going to throw the little bird at you. Ah, yeah, Janna supports. Kai Wing definitely showing up pretty impressive in this game so far. Let's see if they can keep it going. There's the lockdown on the rumble, and in comes Rarus. The gank squad was real. 
in the mid lane. 23 minutes, we've got six kills on the board for Hong Kong Attitude. And again, it's another pick. That said, I know what uh, Evie was trying to do right there. Uh, Lucian up into the top lane had expended his flash. He was trying to buy time. You know, they're trying to force the waves to keep HK bouncing between top and mid, delay them from starting this Baron. Unfortunately, Evie wasn't able to uh, get the hell out of dodge and back into the safe zone. Yeah, now Hong Kong attitude is pretty much all dark in that Baron pick, courtesy of the control ward. It's starting to fall pretty fast, but is this the time for Tussle to try and be the hero? I don't know if he's going to get the chance. His mission standing on the back, trying to force him back, and Dara. He's got the block up here, but they can see they're going to turn around. Don't need the big purple worm. Instead, they want the fight turning it over onto Tussle if they can get him out of the picture while the Baron's still aggroed. Looks like Mission's going to get knocked back, but he's staying alive for the time being. That's a big shield. Baron gets smited on down, and Rerus is still holding on to everyone from Rampage. Here comes Evie. Hong Kong Attitude, they've not lost a man. Evie looking to come around the side, but it might be too little and too late. Godquai still stunned up. Looks like he's going to be the first casualty of the team, or is he? One more auto attack is going to do it for Ramane, but that is a death well spent as Hong Kong managed to get themselves four members on the Baron. And that was a better Baron setup from HK. This time around, they decided that, yes, the jungler is in position, but we have faith in our mid laner and our support to be able to clear out the back of the pit. So you can see Mission, he started on the back. Uh, he was just trying to force people out of line. He then burns the ultimate on Tristana before it's like, hey guys, we need to get Tussle out of here. Uh, Galio forces him over the other side of the wall, and meanwhile, the team just burns the Baron. Yeah, Mission nearly went down, but it was a clutch shield on the end of it. And we're still buying a lot of time. Eventually, you can see Godquai tag his way in. Probably unnecessary. A little bit ham there, but that's okay, Godquai. Uh, you can tell he used to be an AD carry. He's playing Tristana right oh, now yeah. on Jarvan. Wait, I don't have a jump backwards. So the only downside for Hong Kong Attitude right now is they don't have a chance to get the perfect game anymore that they screwed up the last time they met. Well, they also lost a dragon, so that chance... Oh, uh, yeah, I guess that doesn't count. Does it, it sailed okay. a long time ago. Uh, well, I, I miss the boat every now and again. But it's about up. improving on the, the weaknesses that we saw yesterday, which was the Baron setup. You know, it was two steals that really turned the tides of 1907 Fenerbahce's game. Uh, this time around, it wasn't stolen, so we're already on the up. Well, they also did it so effectively to block out the... Potential steal attempt as Godquai finds a death rush, but looks like it might be the death of Rampage. Rerus going all the way in. The equalizer's thrown down, but it's just going to make them back off. Rerus even claiming a kill for himself, while the rest of the team is bringing up the rear. That's a double kill. That Galio deals some serious damage. Shield of Duran. Ramane stunned up. Scout of the Weekend unified with the last hit. It means the door is wide open for Hong Kong Attitude. And Rerus is just so far ahead of the clock right now. The gold advantage, you can already see 10k in his favor. It doesn't matter. He's also got the Baron on top of it. Effectively, he is unkillable. There's no one who can do damage to him, so he's free to just run freely into the back lines and create so much space for his team. He's been a part of every single one of the kill Hong Kong, kills Hong Kong Attitude have had in this game, and it looks like that might be all the ones as they're looking to close this out, just zoning out Yutori Miyashi as the Unleashed Power comes in. He hops back into the fountain, but their Nexus Towers are being cut through. Dara, last chance saloon here as he throws up the Glacial Fissure, but the Nexus is bare with the minions on top. Tussle going down and out. Nothing they can really do here as Mission gets himself a spree kill. And this is going to be all she wrote for Hong Kong Attitude. This is the start. This team wants to be top 16. And a big win on their board is going to help them do it. And it's only a single kill as well as an infernal Drake that denies them the perfect game. HKA came in today and said, we are going to smash everyone. And it started here with Rampage. Well, smash is definitely a very appropriate verb for that game. Hong Kong Attitude showed up and they put the money where the mouths are twice now against Rampage. And huge props to their top laner. Uh, you know, talking to this team, personally, I'm looking at their AD carry, I'm looking at their mid lane, I'm like, wow, you know, mission's really underrated. Uh, unified, a super strong, one of the top ADCs in the LMS, but the team's like, no, 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 our big strong point is Rerus, his ability to understand when he needs to split push, when he needs to collapse for the team. Galio is a perfect champion to empower everything that the team believes that their top laner is good at. Certainly fits the meta as well, so really good time. And Rerus just showed up and delivered multiple times as a hero's entrance. And he really was the hero of that game. Yep. Was able to create massive pressure pivot points for them to move around. Was pretty much on point with the teleport. It was the big TP bottom that really got things snowballed ahead when they took down uh, Yutori as well as Dara there, catching them a little bit too far forward. Yeah, and we talked about the way that Rampage were going.